once Bidan sort of goes the go ahead to begin the meeting. Yeah, uh, Sanjoy, I think you can send a link to people because I think Kailash is also asking. Okay, let me see if I can. Yeah. <laughs> Kalaj, he's got the bloody passcode, he's got the link number. I just ah, heard. Correct. <laughs> I swear. What is this? See, uh, uh, earlier only B section people were asking for it. Now A section have also started <laughs> asking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I think put it on the put it on the uh, uh, put it in the chat. I've put it in the chat. All uh, you know. Yeah, so it's just come. sent it to Kailash and. Yeah, Sanjay, it's come. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Nobody's. This is Sunday morning for most people. Yeah. Hey, Naidu, how are you doing, buddy? It's a, a function. Where's my picture? Oh, I can see. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, that's just like, well, you just appeared somewhere. Captain, countdown begun. Yeah. You want to start 10 30? Well, we wait a couple of minutes more, I guess. Let's wait for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's better to wait a few minutes. Yeah, let's give it a couple of minutes. And no worries. Sure. The Sanjay, Zoom window the can to... get up to 49 people in the in the window. Sanjay. You see yourself? Yes, yeah, Sanjay. No, you're you're um I Hello. think where am I not? Where's your video? Here, you're hold on. Hey, Basu. Hi, 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 Sanjay. Aru, Bros. Aru, Bros. How you doing? Hey, Ram. Aru, T. Hey, Saman. Did we wake you up, Aru? Master. It's very late. It's from night. Hey, Kelu. Hey, Tom. Hi, how are you, Broto? Good. Where is the bad connection? Here's Salim. Okay. Hey, Kailash. Kaka, good there to see is. you. Kailash. Hey, Moise. Deck. Hey. Don't bother about anything on deck. <laughs> you can't join with us. If you have red lines across, then Drive out, Captain. You know, that function is not work. Hey, PK. Hi, Salim. Hi, Salim. Hi, Salim. Hi, everyone. What's our ah, last there he is. Salim Darbar. Mm -hmm. Hi, Aru. It's about time. Yes. <clears throat> Aru, you got to turn Morning, yourself Aru. around. You're like horizontal, man. Uh, okay, hold on. Just turn around. <laughs> yeah, you go. looks good, Aru. You just thought suddenly you become Spider Man or something. Yeah. <laughs> Arup has quietened down a lot. Hey. <laughs> Fuck. I'm trying to see a good place. Right? <laughs> okay, why am I? Good morning. Hey, Vikram, are you in the golf course? Yeah. Why why have you got this bloody mask and I do oh, hold on give me something give me that we're not gonna get COVID from you don't worry Bidan <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm in just in case okay hey Dave hi Dave <laughs> No, I can't. I'm not really able to get it. So I'll just put it on there. Keep from my friend. Keep from my friend.
Bidan, you're also the host, so you can also mute everyone if you want. I'm trying to figure okay. out. Okay, I think let's get started. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you for coming and joining. Uh, I know it's at four hours of the day, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on which part of the world you are in. But I think it speaks of the popularity of Advait, whose life and memories we want to cherish today and commemorate that people from you know, all over the world has joined. Uh, to Advait's family, my name is Bidhan Chaudhary. I'm a classmate of Advait from St. Paul's Darjeeling. And I think uh, you know, most of the people that you see on camera today are our class of 83, uh, who, you know, we have gathered here today to commemorate the memories. Um, first of all, I think just for the rest of our classmates, can I uh, you know, introduce Madhavi? Madhavi, if you just say hello, then you'll come up on screen. Good evening. Good evening from Vancouver and good morning to India. I'm really very fortunate to have you all. You know, uh, it's a great privilege and it's, uh, it's a great asset and it is going to be a treasure for my and for me and for my kids, whatever we are doing today. I thank you all very much. Later on, I'm gonna do some notes as well. Good morning. Thank you, Madhavi. Uh, next to Madhavi, we have his beautiful daughter, Akanksha or Anna. Hi there, nice to meet everyone. Thank you so much for doing this. It's very appreciated. And a image of our Gyaldum in Akshaj, his young son. Yeah. Hello. Uh, first of all, our deepest condolences from all of us uh, to, you, to the family. It's an immeasurable loss. I hope and pray that over time you will find courage to heal. Yeah. However, Advait's memories will live on, and I think today is a day that you know, we will want to live uh, or relive Advait and all the fun times that we had with him in school. Um, for most of us, um, you know, we just got in touch with Advait fairly recently, and that's unfortunate, but also something that we are happy to have uh, re-engaged because we would have regretted it otherwise. Uh, he was a very, very strong character, and I think right through his end, uh, his spirit, his positive nature continued, and that's you know how we remembered him all his life. What I wanted to do was, uh, we've got a short video of Advait uh, over the years, and you know, I'd just like to play that out. It is set against a special song, and you know, hope you enjoy it. Planet 
I trust you were able to relive memories of Advait over the, over the years. Um, as you know, we mentioned his countenance, his smile, uh, his positive energy, you know, right through from his childhood to his last stages, you could see it shining through. Um, I said it was a special song. That song was composed and sung by none other than Kailash. So thank you, Kailash, for getting that done. I'm going to uh, ask Sanjoy. Sanjoy was the closest to Advait and been with the family through the challenges that they had over his illness over the last couple of years. And if Sanjoy could you know, talk us through in terms of his memories and his uh, recollections of Advait. Sanjay, over to you. And thanks a lot for, what, for all that you've done on behalf of the batch. I just wanted to, you know, just uh, thank you for everything that you've done there. He deserved it so much. So he deserved more. So thank you. Um, I guess to start with, just to reflect on Advait, uh, who I loved so much. Um, at age 13, I became close to Adwait. Um, I think amongst us, we're still arguing as to when exactly he got into school. Um, but I remember that he was in senior wing and that he was in Cotton Hall in that dorm. And I was there as well. And that's where we got to really become close in school. And uh, I found that I had an affinity with uh, others who came from outside India uh, because I was a Malaysian myself. And with Adwait coming from Nepal, I, I, it was easy to develop a close friendship with him. And he had a, as, as Bidhan remarked, a very positive energy about him um, that was kind of based on probably our sense of otherness being in India, as well as on his own profound spirituality that was a path that he was embarking on early in his life and that he continued on all through his life. Um, as many of us experienced while we were in school, Adwait would expound on his burgeoning thinking, especially in spiritual matters, as well as other things, at times that lent to com con contemplation. Um, Typically, you know, and I think a lot of us have that experience when we walked around the top field, uh, we would have windswept starlit evenings with the mountains glowing in the moonlight. And, you know, this, these are the things that you remember of the incredible beauty, uh, natural beauty of Darjeeling. And it just inspired, I think, us to talk in very deep ways amongst ourselves. And so... Our conversations would meander among topics that seem to be of tremendous importance to teenagers in that period, with the excitement of being on the verge of a life where we had no known destination, right? Um, we didn't know where we were going to land up. Adwait uh, was a year older than me, uh, me and, and I think many of us, and thus he seemed a little more mature. He seemed physically more capable than many of us. Um, as we progressed in school, I was particularly engaged with him during boxing, which started in school in 1981, which some of us remember. Um, as far as I recall, we were that was about when we were in class 11. Um, a, a hallmark of Adwait 
which was despite his considerable uh, physical abilities, he was patient, firm in trying to transmit a lesson to you and yet gentle in dealing with you. And that was one of the great things about him. Um, with, the, with the rest of us who were leave, leave, uh, learning the sport for the first time, he was so good at, at introducing us. I mean, I remember being very scared when I stepped into the ring with him but, and, and getting that punch from him. But it was just so great you know, when I reflect on the experience and the way he dealt with me. Um, and I think a lot of us remember that about him. Um, he had that hallmark of, of being gyaldung, but yet there was this incredible stream of positive energy and spirituality that was always there about him. After leaving school in 1983, he went on to college in Delhi at Tri Ram College of Commerce, as many of you know, and I'm sure a lot of you will comment on that. And uh, I left to go to college in the US and then it was only after he and his family moved to Vancouver, which was in 2012, um, that we had more opportunities to connect again on phone. And then uh, later on meet his wonderful wife, Madhavi, and the two best kids on this earth, besides my daughter, Akanksha and Akshaj. Um, I got to meet Adwait again on March 6, 2015, physically, when Kailash and I met Adwait in Las Vegas for a memorable three-day visit after so many years. And we got to enjoy an Olivia Newton-John concert together, spend time together after so many years apart, and it was so enjoyable. Um, this version of Adwait was further down uh, his spiritual path while simultaneously trying to make a radical change in his life, trying to reinvent himself in Canada. A far cry from his life in Nepal. His struggle with cancer had already begun by the time we met, but he and Madhavi were determined to not let it rule their lives. And I did not get to know of this new path he was on until later when I was apprised of it. All those qualities that I so admired him earlier, his deep spirituality, his strong athletic prowess, was now coupled with a deepening humility and a powerful courage as he faced these fears of one's mortality that few among us have yet to contend with ourselves. And so I went and was able to meet with them in 2018 and then 2019. And it was such a good, good time and it was so obvious that he was already in the struggle. But we were, I've just been so blessed to know him, to have met his family through him and to have, and I just miss him so much. I just had this wonderful experience a week before he passed that I was in Hawaii and I got to talk to him while on the beach and showed him the waters on the, the waves on the beach and the beauty we had in Maui and he was very moved by that. And he really, and I said, hey, I, I promise we're going to come, I'll, you know, you'll come together and we'll, we'll <clears throat> visit Hawaii together. And, and I just didn't realize that my brother would leave so soon. And, you know, it was such a shock when we heard that he had left us. But it's just been a privilege to know him, just a privilege to know his family. And I am so glad that Advait Raj Freshta came in my path. Back to you, Bidan. Thanks a lot, Sanjoy. Uh, you know, you expressed it beautifully. Um, yeah. Uh, Advait, you know, the things that I remember of him was he was stylish as hell. He made aviators famous much before Tom Cruise did. Uh, he was always immaculately dressed and tailored, right? And as you put it, he had, I think we talked about it is if you watch Karate Kid and there's Miyagi-san, Advait was the younger version of Miyagi-san, calm, cool, collected, but you could never cross uh, or, uh, the boundaries with him. So yeah, 
beautiful memories. Thanks a lot. Um, I think uh, Kalash is probably getting uh, uh, difficult connected. So Mahesh, if I can ask you to come forward. Hey, thanks, Bridan, and thank you so much for organizing this. Also to Sanjoy for being there. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. So yeah, a very good morning from Nairobi um, here in Kenya to everyone, greetings. It's really unbelievable that Adwit is no more. Yeah? I was dreading that WhatsApp call from Sanjoy and it happened, but um, I last spoke to him on December 10th um, and he was really in good mood. I mean, he was sharp, his memory was too good and he had that philosophical angle as, as Sanjoy mentioned. We discussed many things, especially Clive House. We were in the same table, <laughs> lunch, breakfast, dinner, everything together. Um, our Nepali classes with Mr. Tamang, et cetera. I noticed his goatee just like mine, yeah? So he, <laughs> he was bright. Uh, but one thing that I we forgot to talk about and I would like to share with everyone is that both Adwit and me, we went off to uh, Darjeeling after school. This is, we did the HMI basic course. Um, it was 1985, 86 summer. Uh, we were in between like, I think 30 Indian army officers. And there was Adwit, you know, climbing his ice work, rock climbing. He was too good. He was he basically outshone everyone. So it was really nice, the three, four weeks with him and we really bonded. I think that was nice to really, I went from Pilani and he went from Delhi. Um, so, and we had the same familiar, Sandafu, Falhud, et cetera, those routes um, and, and, and to overcome that Khan experience when I, I saw some of those pictures there. Uh, but then even after finishing school in Nepal, um, I was in touch with him. I remember going to his place in Jalak Hill upstairs. Um, and then he used to visit my place. Uh, but then when I moved to Bangkok, I think that's when we sort of lost touch um, a bit. Um, um, and my memory of, of Adwit, as, as you've all mentioned, Bidan was very immaculately dressed, his Sunday suit, three piece with umbrella going down town. I mean, Galvin was too much. Um, and also his kind and caring nature. I think um, that was something I always will take with him. And just let me end by sharing a verse uh, that I shared with, with Madhavi, uh, which I remember from St. Paul's. It goes like this. Life is eternal and love is immortal and death is only a horizon, and a horizon is nothing but the limit of our sight. Rest in peace, brother. We love you and miss you. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you very much, Mahesh. Beautifully said. Um, what you said about HMI and him being ahead of all the others in that mountaineering course, I can well comprehend. When we watched the uh, movie 14 Peaks, the first name that came to my mind was Gyaldum. Uh, and, you know, very much so for all those who were in Kangla, all the Sherpas and Gyaldum were about three hours ahead of everybody else, <laughs> while the rest of us struggled to make it up. Right? So, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, since you mentioned Clive House, uh, we have Clive House captain, Mr. Praveen Deva with us. Praveen, uh, mm -hmm. your thoughts on Adwet? <clears throat> well, uh, Fresh up, I mean, I'll just tell you what happened when I first, I mean, we were, we didn't meet after school much, maybe once in SRCC. But when I, when I got this news, I was shattered. And, you know, there was, there was a sense of something just missing, something is just gone. And then I started feeling very insecure. And I was thinking to myself, why? I mean, you know, I've not met this guy now for almost 40 years. 
why has he just, you know, taken the earth away from my feet? And why is that vacuum? I just can't fill it. And, you know, I just, I was go going around like a zombie for like one or two days. I spoke to Rajesh. And this I guess I got an answer from a post which, and I, and I did post it on the group also, is that why do the best and the strongest have to go first? I think I got an answer from Wellinger's post where he said that uh, he was true to his name. So like most of us who are brilliant in Hindi and Nepali, I went and Googled it. And it says Advait means, you know, the only one unique and Shreshta is the best, excellent. And he was actually true to his name. So just to digress a little, uh, I'll give you an incident from St. Paul's, right? We went to live house. Sportsmen from us were like a little, you know, shaky part. So let's say football. We have this team in Lawrence, which had Naidu and uh, uh, Danny and, you know, uh, Himanshu, the captain. Um, we had Hastings, which had Bidhan, which had Kailash, which had uh, Tashi. I mean, you know, the works. And here at Clive, little Clive, we had one extra man goalkeeper, me. We had one guy, Mahesh Pradhan, who could probably kick, kick the ball a little. And we had Shreshta, right? And for fuck's sake, we won the cup. So that's, that's Shreshta. I mean, he was the strongest. He was a pillar of confidence. And that's, I mean, whether it was running, he never got tired. Whether it was calm, he never, he just went on and on. Whether it was boxing, he just kept getting no knocks out. So no matter where he was, you knew that there was a stretch who existed. And he was a pillar of strength. And that's really what took the feet away from me. And then I said, okay, there's only one Shreshta. He's... So probably, you know, a guy like this is required everywhere. And so God could, probably God couldn't live without him. He had to call him and he's got enough troubles himself. So that's, that was the reason, I mean, I thought. And uh, I mean, he's been absolutely true to his name. There will be no, I mean, you, you know, you can't beat perfection. So you, know, you can just try to be like Shrishta. So he'll be missed, can't be replaced. But as everybody has said, I'm very grateful for the time which we got to live with him and it's been an honor and an absolute pleasure. And that's been Shreshta for me. And will always be there for me. Over to you, Bidan. Thanks, Praveen. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I think what you said about his being at the defense of our football team was absolutely true. Not only was that, he was, you know, everyone knew he was tough as hell. But I remember a game where his shoulder got dislocated and he kept saying, Abui, Abui, pushed it back in and he continued right. playing. Right? Yeah. How right. did he get off the game? He just carried right. on. And that's, that's how strong and mentally tough he was. So fantastic. Um, I'm going to go on to uh, his next football mate, Mr. Tamang Ritwik. Are, are you on? Thank you, Bidan. Thank you, Sanjoy, for organizing this. Well, um, my deep condolences to the family. I'm going to read out what I've written about my memories with Adwait. Adwait Raj Shrestha, son of Sri Agni Raj Shrestha, a renowned intellectual not only in Nepal, but Darjeeling too. I first met Adwait when he joined us in school. One look at him and you knew he was a natural athlete. A toughie he was, 
but with a heart of gold. Within a few days, I noticed his skills in table tennis and the, thus pounced on the opportunity of partnering him in the doubles event. Thanks to his penal style and attacking game, we reached the finals and lost to a formidable team only because I was the weak link. Thank you, Sati. That was my first and last certificate in TT in all my life. No one can forget the historic football match between SP and NP in 1982. The Spatties had come to give us a thrashing. And within 15 minutes of the game, Dendup Gelson, the star striker, had scored two goals. However, thereafter, the rock of our defense, Adwait Aka Galdung, marked him. And the goals dried up. We won that game 3-2. Probably the, probably the first time SP had beaten NP in a football game. A team which had come to thrash us went back in tears. I remember towards the latter half of 1982, Adwet was training very seriously with the sole purpose of joining Sandhurst, the Royal Military Academy, Academy in England. I always felt that he had all the attributes to make a fine Gorkha officer in the British Army. Going by his dedication, determination, and discipline, I'm sure he would have superseded Lieutenant Colonel Yam Badur Rana, the highest ranking Gorkha officer in the British Army. Lastly, thanks to the advent of social media, I got to reconnect with Adwait a couple of years ago. Ever since, there was never a day he would not send a good morning message on Messenger and WhatsApp. We talked often. I remember the last conversation we had when he was in the hospital. A proud father told me how well his children were doing in school and university. After a long conversation, he ended, he ended it in typical Darjeeling, Darjeeling style humor by saying, Sati, hami dui leta shyanu shyanu cheti bihe gare chai. Basically in English he meant, buddy, the two of us oldies have managed to marry two very young girls because the age difference between our wives and us were of about 10 years. Despite being un unwell, he was so positive and full of life and kept in touch with each one of us. So long, Sati, until we meet again on the other side. Over to you, Bidan. Thanks, Ritwik. Beautifully expressed. Very, very emotional. Thank you. Um, I'll ask uh, Lolly SK, was his buddy from gym team and others. Lolly, are you on? Can you hear me? Yep, we can. Go ahead, Lolly. Okay, I won't take up too much of time. Uh, again, uh, condolences to the family. I've never met you, but uh, Adwait always kept me uh, up to date with, with you all over, over calls. And okay, I just want to share two thoughts um, about Adwait. And this was my first and lasting impression. And my first impression of Adwait was when I first saw him, he was wearing a three-piece brown suit with a 70s, 1970s tie, which covered half his chest. And I thought to myself, this guy is weird because he was walking into a music appreciation class as a new boy. That I think was in uh, 1977, I think, or somewhere around that time. Anyway, Adwe grew on me in the next several years as we were teammates in the gym team, the defense partners in the football team, mountain climbers together and much, much more. And he was my very close friend. Now for the lasting impression. We used to do a, a gymnastics display every, every year. And uh, when we were initially, we had joined the uh, gymnastics team. Uh, we were doing our first practice for something that was 
the the star of the show which is called the fire jump jumping through a ring of fire and this was a first practice and advait went first he jumped through the fire and after completing it he was so much in awe of what he had done that he forgot to get off the mat and i was next and i jumped through the fire and i was in mid air and i saw that i was about to land on his neck so i i bunched my knees and the knee, my knees hit my face and half my front tooth went flying across the room now of course i immediately saw stars and and i had a blackout but when i came to i saw advait's face and he was asking me are you okay no i was not okay because i have had a false tooth ever since leaving a lasting impression now i i don't know how many girls in my life have rejected me because of that tooth but let me say this shrestha my brother i will willingly break many more teeth just to have you amongst us again rest in peace my friend thank you bidan thank you thanks sk thanks a lot uh, was really nice um we have uh, dev dev you are on thank you bidan and um, so much and uh, the deepest condolences to madhavi and the family uh, as i got up at 5 o'clock this morning i, I live in uh, switzerland uh, i smiled wistfully at the remembrance of festa um, because we were cotton hall prefects together and i was perpetually late for everything and i still remember uh, him this morning with his voice in his distinctive voice telling me come on sunny i don't be late again and uh, so here i am uh, at least uh, on time to commemorate a, a great guy um i want to just share three reflections of fest of i got to know quite well in our final year in school because we were the two guys in cotton hall and um, in the course of uh, two th- uh, 1983 for two months uh, we were actually the only two guys in cotton hall uh, during the uh, exam time and um, the thing i remember about him very distinctively was he would do yoga and exercise early in the morning now imagine you're in this sort of cold terrible place uh, near the top field and there's no one in the hall and early in the morning you'd get this sort of shout and you think oh my god what's happened and it would be actually a dear galdum uh, exercising and doing his um, you know various uh, uh exercise pieces in the morning and the second thing i remember about him was his deep sense of integrity uh, there was an incident with one of the young boys in um, in in cotton hall and he stood up for the boy against a master and that <clears throat> actually when you now look back required an enormous amount of courage and it spoke to his values his integrity and his sense of doing what's right and and i remember that very distinctively and the third element that i remember of him was actually you know and it became more and more the case uh, as the years passed by but he actually had a in a core what they call a hinterland a, a deep uh, philosophical sense about life about being and and actually uh, you know that was there back in the day but we all probably didn't quite understand it but as the years went by uh you know he would send like many of you you know notes one on one notes reflecting on life reflecting on you know uh stuff that is going on in everybody's uh you know did uh be and his final note to me which was i think uh, around a week before he left us was if it comes take it if it goes let it I mean, what a beautiful line uh which i think reflects the person what i thought i'd do at the very end of my memories is just share a line which uh, has you know had a lot of resonance in me a line goes as follows when the dust settles you never remember 
what a person said or did. Remember how they made you feel. And he made us feel awful. And we will miss him terribly. Rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dave. That was, that was really, really nice. And uh, you're right about, he was unique in many ways. He, he used to practice yoga much before we heard that term. He did his eye exercises and keep waggling his finger in front of his nose. He, he, he taught me that exercise and I did it and did it for a long time. It served my eyes extremely well. Um, so yeah, he was, he was a unique mix of philosophical, um, fun and extremely, extremely talented as an athlete. So great memories of Cotton Hall and, you know, you're all mentoning the younger kids there. So I'm going to ask Kalash, Kalash, if you are, if your network is back. Uh, Kelly, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, Great to meet everybody, though the occasion is uh, it's sad, but at the same time, it's also a celebration. And um, there are a few things uh, which I'll talk about, like the first impression of uh, Shrestha. I call him Shrestha. I mean, like uh, Adwait sounds a little too Sanskrit and Gyaldung was a little to Darjeeling, so for me, I feel safe with uh, uh, Shrestha. And um, when he joined, like, you know, uh, it's like, I guess that's how like inmates feel in a jail. Like there's a new inmate coming in and like, who's this dude? Like he's got this like funky specs and uh, he had this NP kind of a persona with a uh, cut in his blazer. And we guys were a little bit more kind of, uh, sober and um, obedient uh, type so and uh, kind of a like a nice kind of a swagger you know like and uh, I remember like uh, in class eight like I was just learning the guitar and he was also learning the guitar and um, I was better than him but he had more confidence than me and uh, the musical evening, like uh, he's saying, okay, let's play. He knew this John Denver song, let's, I'll Walk in the Rain by Side. I knew Country Roads. And um, I was like really like uh, petrified, but uh, like he made me do it. And uh, I guess from there, it started a long kind of a friendship uh, between um, us. And so this confidence, like, you know, um, it was, in a way, I found it surprising because I don't know why. I mean, like, I I didn't expect it. It was unexpected in a way. Like, it came through, like, in... He had a way with women. Like, um, in Polites, we were kind of a little bit uh, cagey about that. But somehow, like, I found that surprising. And um, there was also a strange thing in football that he used to do. I mean, like, I guess uh, nobody... FIFA hasn't heard of it yet. It's called, like, uh, shouldering the ball. Like, you know, like... We used to have this wet, big, heavy ball, and it came from the other side. And you had to think, okay, like, okay, I've got to head this ball, otherwise, I'm out of the team or I'm going to lose my memory. And so he invented this uh, shoulder move, you know, like, and he use his shoulder and uh, send the ball right back to the other D. So that was uh, something very like uh, special about him. I uh, spent like um, part of my winter holidays after class 10 with him. Like I stayed with him, um, got to know his family. We cycled all over Kathmandu. Both of us were crushing on like girls at the same time, like who were from Kathmandu. So we didn't do anything. We just happened to be in the same city. And uh, may not be kosher to say here, like we saw our first like porn together. Like in those days it was called like blue film, you know, like, so that was a huge kind of a uh, deal at that time. Um, so uh, the other thing about him was, uh, yeah, this kind of a deep sense of uh, like, a, like a moral sense, like um, I think a lot of us have talked about it. And I'll be honest, like, at times it used to really kind of like, um, I used to find it a little irritating sometimes, but that's, I mean, I knew him, that's who he was, you know, like, and uh, I remember uh, we were caught in a 
fight, like this is the post that football match that uh, Tamang talked about. Bidan was there, remember, and Kevin Ters, uh, there was Shrestha, there was me, there was, I think, Lolly, I'm not sure. We were walking up uh, near uh, Mrs. Thapa's house. Suddenly, these NP guys came and they kind of like uh, started like swinging at us. And Bidan was like the hero, like he kind of like sent some guys into the drain and all that. And I'm kind of like trying to be the moderate vice captain, A guys, like, so why are you fighting and all that stuff? But, and I looked around and Shrestha is not there. Where are you? Like, and uh, after like uh, 15 minutes, he comes back like in his game's clothes. He's saying, I can't fight in my school uniform. Like, so he had to change into his game's clothes to come back and fight. Like, <laughs> come on, like you know, so anyway, so that's him. Like, uh, and like, uh, and there was an incident like uh, about the same things uh, connected. There was, uh, there was a teacher, I won't name him, like, implicated in a incident i think uh sunny also trying to uh, refer to that and we had to confront him because uh, he was like kind of making passes at a junior as prefects like it was a tricky situation we didn't know what to do so in the middle of the night we called him to like one of the remote classes uh in the corner of school and uh, we had to confront him and so we had this difficult situation trying to like talk to uh, this teacher and uh, I look on my side and there is uh, Shrestha in his, okay, he's not in his school uniform, he's in his like singlet, like his vest and he's got a nunchaku like around his like neck. So I don't know like what he was thinking, but uh, again, like uh, that's him, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I talk about a lot. I mean, I, uh, uh, thanks to Sanjoy, like I got to connect back with him um, about like uh, 2015. Uh, we met in uh, um, Las Vegas, and um, and I talked to him later on, like uh, towards the end, also a couple of times. <coughs> and, uh, on a more serious note, like he carried this weight on his shoulders. Like he was, he always felt that. I mean, I think he was. Like he, 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 you know, he didn't do enough in life, and you know, like he, he's not living up to his potential. And and um, for me, a guy who's not married and who doesn't have family, and you know, when I think of him, like, and I told him so also that what he like, I mean, first all you guys who are raising families, like I think it's a huge thing that you guys are doing. But for him to take that extra step to find to feel that okay, like you know, like his family would have a better life in uh, Canada, and to uproot himself like from Nepal, like very late in life, and to bring his family to Canada and to give his like uh, to Akansha and uh, Akshaj uh, new life. I mean, I think that's amazing, and I told him so, and I hope that gave him some uh, peace of mind towards the end, and. Um, and uh, this is to like uh, Madhavi, Akansha, and Aksaj that, um, okay, like here's this guy who's talking like he's a good, he says he's a good friend, but you know, he was, he was absent, he wasn't there. And I mean, I feel like I'm a bit of this person like who's really lucky at keeping in touch. And maybe that's because I don't have family and I don't realize the passage of time. And when I see like uh, my friends, uh, kids or my, um, my relatives, like uh, kids who are growing up, I, suddenly I realized that my God, like time has passed. So I hope to get you to get you know know you guys better, and uh, I hope that we'll meet some time. And um, but I just want to tell you guys that um, you always have uh, a home here in my place in Sikkim whenever you want to come here. And um, if you can reach out, if there's anything that you need, anything that you want help with, anything you want to talk about, so. I'll end it there, Vikram. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Kelly. I think, uh, you know, you brought back some wonderful memories. That shoulder header of his was outstanding, right? It used to come back with so much of force. Now that you've just brought back some really vivid memories of his shoulder <laughs> tactics. Um, I think what you've forgotten to mention to Madhavi is that we got into the fight thanks to him winking at some girl. And we got surrounded on that slope heading up to Dr. Pembas. And 
you know, he took this principal stand saying that I don't fight in my school clothes. So he went up. I don't think it was games clothes. He went back and got into his famous bang bang jeans, flashy bang bang jeans, and then came and dispensed off with all the others. Till then, he kept sort of scuffling away and trying to hold form. But that was a great principal, but very, very memorable. So we've got his boxing mate, both I think in school. Are you and Take home. Sandeep, you're there? Is that me, Bidan? Oh, thanks, Bidan. Yeah, thanks, Bidan, for asking me to speak. Though I'm hardly the person to be asked. There are still many others who shared very close bonds with Sreshta and yet prefer to grieve privately. My heartfelt condolences to them, too. And having heard all of you, I must confess, I never had the privilege of knowing Shrestha as well as any of, any of you. Never was in the same house, never in any of the games team, never in the same dorm, never also a part of his well, weekend buddies who walked down to town. So never really yeah. had much of an interaction with him while in school. He was, of course, the backbone almost everywhere. And one always saw a very humble, tough, and hardworking guy in whatever he did. One who commanded a sense of respect, dignified, and always poised. Perhaps my only interaction was in uh, boxing days. Uh, this was... I, I would, however, keep my distance uh, to just save my face. Uh, Shrestha, as you know, always made an effort to be in touch. But having said that, having just actually gone back to those boxing days, I just remember I was still recovering from a black eye I got from uh, Dandania while I was attempting to take off photograph of him in the showers with his newly uh, bought Nikon camera. For Dhanu, of course, that was a big moment, making sure everyone knew how he was responsible for my visible bru bruise. How time has flown ever since. I mean, just heard you guys, one begins to realize in times like these that life is not only short, but one missed out on the opportunity to know a man who left such a deep impact. Ever since the batch WhatsApp group was formed, Shrestha always made an effort to keep in touch and prefer to interact on a private chat, even if it was just to send a birthday wish. He made it so personal always with a deeper message. I too joined Srinam after school and occasionally hung out in the dorms with him just to say hi to the guys. I distinctly remember on one of those afternoons, Shrestha had his gloves on, punching on a sparring bag, practicing hard and asked, if I would spar with him. A little more confident this time, I was in my peak of weightlifting days. I readily agreed and had a few bouts. He insisted right after that I take part in the inter-university boxing championship that was scheduled two days later. I was elated to see his confidence in me. Uh, having looked up to this tough guy always, he went and signed me up insisting I take part. Two days later, here we were, two poor lights at one of the North okay. Campus universities with a few hundred spectators, nervous that we were paired against some state level boxers from Mariana. He was so selfless that day, fully convinced I had a better chance of a win. Proud of what we achieved, the memory still lingers. We both came out as best losers, at least in our minds. To see this now happen to perhaps one of the fittest guys in the batch brings home the unpredictability of life and teaches us to make the most of the moment. I cannot but help thanking Sanjoy once again for being there for him, for being there for the family, for the batch. The gratitude is extended to your family who allowed you to give your best at this time of need without which nothing would have been possible. Bless you. You were by his side all those tough years. And you never let anyone know what you did for him, both emotionally and physically. While many of us 
were in our own world, oblivious of your support. Thank you. Lastly, I just hope we don't have to meet again under these circumstances for a long time to come. Madhvi and kids will always remain a part of this Wallite family. Let's please plan a reunion with all these guys. Bless you guys. Over to you, Bidhan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you very much for thing, and you expressed it well. Uh, Madhavi, Anna, Akshaj, you have a family, you have an extended family. So please don't hesitate to reach out, uh, you know, in case you need and we'll always be there to support you. I know there might be others who would also want to speak, but I think just in the interest of time, Madhavi, uh, Anna, all, I know you all wanted to sort of express your thoughts, so go ahead, please. What else do you want? Can you guys hear us? Hello? Um, firstly, um, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for organizing this for my dad. I know it would have meant a lot to him. St. Paul's to him was like, it was the core of his identity and he really valued all of you guys and all your friendships. Um, I think my mom wants to say a few words for my father first. You know, uh, hearing uh, the story of the school days. I can remember a few things he used to often uh, mention about his boxing and uh, his uh, uh, soccer, mo mostly about his uh, games and everything. And uh, some of the names are very, very familiar to me too because he always talked about my friend is this, my friend is here, my friend is doing this, my friend named this one is here, he is doing this, that. And I'm very familiar with some of the names. Thank you very much. We know like, you know, Advait was a unique person and we all know that. I think I want to share one story as well, apart from his uh, school days. I'm hearing, you know, how unique person he was. At the same time, I can say, even the meetup with me and the marriage with me was very, very unique. I want to, I want to, you know, uh, tell you the story how I met Advait. It is another very interesting chapter of his life. Though I have a 14 years age gap difference with Addy, uh, I born and brought up in Korsiang a very small town. I did my schooling, then I went to Bombay and I did my fashion designing. And after coming back from Bombay, I could not find anything to do in Persian. So I felt like going to Kathmandu and, and get some exposure and see something if I find there. Then I went to Kathmandu and I stayed with my uncle's place. And my uncle told me like, he gonna introduce me with a guy, a son of his friend who has openly, uh, who has recently opened a fashion house. And you know, next day, and I was just 19 at that time, I was just 19 years old, a very young kid. And next day, my uncle told me, a person is coming to see you tonight. And this person was none other than Addy. And he came to my uncle's place, he took my interview and I got the job and he asked me to join next morning. And next morning he came to pick me up. He took me to his uh, fashion house. I was hired, I started working. And, uh, and I started working and uh, you know, he, he, he started going like picking up in the morning and taking me for a lunch and dropping up at my uncle's place at my home later. He became kind of a uh, guardian to me, you know? And slowly, slowly the, the routine became very, very regular. And slowly he started saying, I like you, I love you, and I want to marry you. And I was like, oh my God, this man looks like my fatherly figure. If I have to marry him, I'll jump in the river. <laughs> that was my thinking. I was such a young, I was just 19 years and Addy was around like in his thirties. And, and you know, he, he never stopped saying, he never stopped, you know, caring for me, coming after me, though he was my boss. And uh, 
you know, the, the routine started like that. I started working and, and after some time, I, I started working in an airline industry as well as an air hostess. But my previous boss, Addy, never stopped coming back, to, back, you know, coming behind me. Always he was waiting for me for a lunch, for a dinner. Always he used to pick me up. And I, I was working uh, both sides, his, his uh, fashion company as well, at the same time, uh, the airline industry too. And, uh, you know, while going the routine like that, I started coming closer too. And he never stopped saying like, I love you. I like you. I want to marry you. And I was like, no wonder. I don't want to get married. You look like fatherly figure to me. I'm so small. He's like, no, I'll go and talk to your parents. And, you know, uh, he took the address of my parents and without letting me know, he took the flight. He went to Koshyang and he found uh, my house and he stayed with my parents for two days. And he talked to my dad that he wants to marry me since I, I, I raised in a very, very compact family and uh, my dad got surprised and I was the only daughter of my dad. And uh, of course, me and my brother, we are only two. And uh, he asked my father, he wants to marry me. I want to marry your daughter. And my father said, oh, there are a lot of difference. Like, you know, there is an age difference, education difference, uh, family difference, caste difference. Nothing matches with, your, uh, with my daughter. Why are you after my daughter? Why you want to marry my daughter? Then Addy replied, I see the glimpses of mother in your daughter. That's why I want to marry her. And my, God, my dad, you know, he was speechless. He couldn't say anything. He again said, I see the glimpses of my mother in your daughter. So I want to marry her. And I promise you, I give you word, I will... I will take care of her like you did. I will, I will take care of her the way you, you know, kept her. I will never ever allow you to complain about me. So I want to marry your daughter. Then, you know, after the conversation with my father, he returned to Kathmandu and he said, I talked to your father. I was like, oh my God, what a, what a guts this man has, you know? And I, I, was, I was still, I don't want to get married. I don't want to get married. You know, and um, my dad called me up and he asked me, uh, "Your boss had come and he wants to marry you." I said, "No, I don't want to." Then my my dad said, uh, "What I realized after talking to him is, always find a person who really loves you, and who is really, really." you know, wants to take care of you like your father. So I'm happy if you want to get married with him. Then in the meantime, while we had this conversation going on and the, the thing we're going on about the Addy's side and my dad's side and everything, and I wasn't, you know, uh, I wasn't that interested, you know, I was uh, into airline industry and fashion industry. And, you know, I was in my own world. And, and in that meantime, what happened was, Addy lost uh, his mother at first and he was mama's boy. And within 11 months, Addy lost his father too. And it was a kind of uh, a very sorry situation for Addy. And with my vivid eyes, I saw how uh, desperate and sad Addy was. And the home looked very, very empty with my brother-in-law and a small sister, sister-in-law. And because of that scene, uh, you know, that Ad Addy went through uh, within uh, 11 months of, you know, uh, losing his dad and mother, uh, the house became so empty and he was so shattered. And inside me, I felt like maybe, uh, you know, I should get married with him and give him a family. Then um, I changed my mind and I decided to get married. And uh, yeah, and I, I got married happily. I lived like a queen in Eddie's world. Uh, 
now I feel, you know, uh, now I feel so sad and I'm proud of Addy. Whatever he, you know, gave promise to my father that uh, he will never ever allow himself to, you know, complain uh, anybody about Addy. I mean, me to, to my dad. He was true, you know. I lost my father a uh, year back because of the COVID. And I lost Addy after a year. Addy was true. I don't have my father to complain now. He was true. He kept his promise. I miss him so much. He was such a wonderful father, a fantastic husband. Every word is less for Addy to express, you know? He was such a unique person. He was my mentor, my guardian, my photographer, my admirer. He was always proud talking about me. Because of him, I am who I am today. He shaped me from a young girl to a stronger lady today. He gave me all the mantra of life to move forward. He always said, I have three kids at home and the eldest one is toughest, which was me for him. Since the day he left us, my home feels exactly three kids without a parents. We miss him every moment. I thank all of you guys calling him and keeping him busy and alive with your endless talks during his last days in the hospital. I was present there watching and hearing your conversation with him. Thank you for being my extended families. My love for Addy is immeasurable and I will stay as Mrs. Tresta forever until we unite again. His last words in the hospital for me was, go to spa every month, be pretty and gorgeous as you are and live life to the fullest. That was his words for me in the hospital during his last days. And I have decided now to move forward with his words and teachings along with my two beautiful plates. And I'm happy to have you all as my extended families. Thank you, St. Paul's. Thank you guys. Um, next, I would like to um, show you a recording that my aunt made on her behalf, if that's okay with you guys. I'll try to make it like not as loud because I don't know if the mic is too loud. Let me know if it's too loud and I'll reduce the volume. I 
shoes. When understand there's much more than money. Try to differentiate the good and the bad. You need to have discipline and you need to know when to say no. So this was the level of confidence he gave me. And this is just a small memory out of so many memories that I have with him. Ever since he moved to Canada, not even a day went without talking with him, texting him. He was my best friend. I could share each and everything with him. The point when it hit me the most was right after my brother's pass to heaven, I was tested for positive. And then at that very moment, I cannot express how much I missed him. I missed his call. I missed his messages. I missed his constant nagging and calls reminding me to drink this, take that medicine, do this, do that. And I know I have to accept that this is going to be forever. Learning to live without what constant to get up and keep going. Words cannot express what it means to me and how much I miss him. There's no one like him, caring, loving, understanding, and the most important thing, he always stood for me. He never gave up on me. He will always be my favorite son, brother. He will always be my number one brother. I love you, dad, when he loves you. And I promise, I'll live a happy life. I'll live a good life. I'll be disciplined. Um, one thing that my dad loved doing was giving advice to people trying to help them. And a hobby that he and I had taken up was just making fun, inspirational videos on Instagram about his life advice. And I found one yesterday. I think it would be quite refreshing for us to all hear his voice again. And I thought that this theme would be quite appropriate for today. Um, and I hope that you enjoy what he has to say. So manage yourself. How can I do this in one year when someone else has done it in six years? Time is running. Most of you will be thinking that how will I manage this? Remember, time is only identified because of a physical nature and time rules you. The fuel, your life energy, like knowledge, energy and wealth, you cannot accumulate time. But by using and managing your life energy productively with commitment and courage, the outcome will be faster. Time is. So we're almost done, I promise. Um, in these last few weeks, I've had to come up with a plethora of speeches, statements, and explanation about my father and his unfortunate passing. Despite all this, I've come to conclude that no amount of words writing or expression can never accurately describe my father and what a dynamic person he was. He was funny, he was smart, but he was so much more than that. His unique quirks, his almost sickening positivity, and his virtue, combined with all other characteristics that you've mentioned, is what truly made my father the man that he was and continues to be in our hearts. A good man accepts his responsibilities. He does his job, raises his family, respects his faith, but a virtuous man goes above and beyond expectations. He not only accepts his responsibilities, but thrives in them. And my father did just that. My father didn't just do his job, but he did it with passion. He educated himself, evoked interest in every possible way to improve his work. He not only raised his family, but he elevated, he elevated us as a whole. As humans, but most importantly, as souls. He never focused on our decorations, rather enlightened us with his high thinking from within. His faith expanded deeper than just respect. It connected with him. And faith wasn't something that he practiced. It was a part of him. He held onto this faith until the very end when he rightfully transitioned from this earthly world to the universe. 
For those of you who weren't able to deeply reconnect with my father in the last few decades, here's a quick rundown of what my father has been up to. So after completing his high school at San Juan, my father furthered um, an honors bachelor's of commerce degree in the Sri Ram College of Commerce in Delhi University, and then followed by his master's. His early career highlights consists of modeling and advertising where he subsequently met my mother. Um, he was one of the pioneers to bring advertising to Nepal, establishing one of the first advertising and marketing companies, Intervision, in 1986. This was also the period where he promoted modeling and organized beat contests and fashion shows. In 1988, he established Nepal's Q Interior Design Company, which he loved dearly. Simultaneously, he started the Addy Art Gallery to promote local Nepalese artists in the international level. He was a humanitarian at heart, and throughout all this, he made sure to dedicate time to the less fortunate. My mother and father collectively initiated fashion shows, fashion shows for underprivileged kids. He was the secretary and international speaker of the Rotary Club of Kathmandu, Nepal, and endorsed many events such as World Pneumonia Day. He further opened Nepal Rocks and Gems Training Institute, where he collaborated with the Nepalese government in order to train disadvantaged people and hired them to work in the gemology industry. The list goes on. He actively pursued several businesses with success throughout his life in Nepal, then pursuing his other goals in Canada. He graduated in gemology from the Canadian Institute of Gemology. He also attained several courses on life coaching with interest in spirituality, mental health, ancient history, and culture. Further, he was a part of organizations as the Toastmasters Canada, which provided him opportunities for public speaking, as well as participated in many international expos in aid of Nepalese culture. A well-rounded, accomplished individual, my father had no complaints about his life. He was content with the career he had established, content with the family he upraised, and content with the friendships he had built. Sometimes life is just unfair, and perhaps God saw what an impeccable person he was and couldn't wait to take him up to heaven to experience complete bliss. Not a moment will go by without us missing my father, but we have no regrets about the abundant life that he lived. Thank you. I will give it back to Bidan. Also, let you know, guys, uh, uh, the Canadian journey of Addy. You guys might be, you know, questioning about it. Uh, happily living in uh, Kathmandu, uh, everything was very good. It was my uh, decision to come to Canada because I don't want to raise kids in Nepal. Since I was working in an airline industry, I have seen the value of passport. I don't wanted my kids to hold a Nepalese passport, which is never going to, you know. Uh, sell in the market. So I, I, I started fighting with Addy, like I don't want to raise uh, kids in Nepal. And he was such a, you know, established businessman there. And he said, no, I don't want to go to, you know, foreign land. This is my age to come back uh, from the foreign land. Addy was uh, already in his 49, almost of 50 years of age. And I had a fight for six months. And I said, uh, if you are not taking us to Canada, that I'm going to take the kids to Darjeeling and not going to come back. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I just, uh, I just had an argument. I just uh, uh, give him a, uh, you know, a shot of shock, like I'm going to do that. And because I don't want to, you know, raise kids in, uh, in Nepal and through like Addy as a successful businessman, uh, uh, it was very easy for us to get the Canadian citizen, uh, Canadian uh, PR. And uh, we had a fight. He don't want it to come. It was my decision. I forced him. I dragged him. And he said, OK. And within two months, we got the PR when we were in Nepal through the Addis, you know, as a, as a business uh, category. So the transition was very good. I moved to Canada in uh, 2012. Transition was really, really good. Uh, we didn't, you know, had to, to go through a lot of things. Easily, we uh, settled down here. And after coming here, uh, we landed 2012. In 2016, almost at the end of 2016, Addy diagnosed with cancer. And uh, uh, Addy and kids, we didn't tell kids at that time. It was only for me and Addy. It, it came as a shock, as a nightmare. But there was a quick solution, and uh, doctor and everybody walked quickly that came out of cancer. And uh, okay, back to life, you know, we were living very good life in Canada. Addie was doing good, I was doing good. And Addie was cancer-free for uh, almost four years. Uh, then after like 
four years um, uh, before, I think, 15, 16 months, because his body was uh, getting monitored every six months. Uh, then he diagnosed, then the doctor said uh, there is, again, a cancer cell found in his body. It was 15 months back, and I got shattered, you know, Addy and me. But I can tell Addy was a fighter. I told kids it was roughly a one week. We had a very, very tough time at home. Then I decided, I told Addy, because Addy was very, very fit and fine. His cancer was not in any parts of uh, his uh, organs. His vital organs were working very good. The cancer cell was seen only in the nodules, a very small uh, spot in the nodules, not in any organs. So uh, I told Addy, you just look after your body, you focus on your body, and we will get back to our normal life. And Addy was such a fighter. He pushed his body like anything. As you guys said, he was a real athlete. Even doctor said the same thing. Addy's vitals, organs, and everything, his body looks like an athlete. And he fight, you know, he fight very, uh, in a very good way, I think, because I have seen so many cancer patients, you know, uh, going through a lot of huddles and uh, ups and downs and all. But cancer, never ever affected uh, our family life, family movement. Addy lived till the last moment. The only moment uh, cancer hit was 9th of December when he got a, a very bad pain and I rushed him to the hospital and doctor and everybody said, nothing, nothing is, uh, you know, uh, there is no anything, he looks normal. Uh, the, the cancer is passive. There is no any thing in his body. You can go home. The Addy said, no, I got a pain. I got a very bad pain. Even I told doctor, I never saw that pain before. There is something, uh, you know, uh, wrong in his body. So Addy insisted to stay in the hospital. Then doctor started to reassessing, reassessing the things and everything. And, uh, you know, after a week or 10 days, doctor found out like uh, there is some aggressive uh, cancer cell has come up in his body. And while treating the cancer, while treating the cancer, he got the infection. And because of the infection, he does, he could not fight back. I still say, Addy is a winner for cancer. It never affected his body and our family life. We lived Addy, till his last minute, he lived life beautifully and happily. While treating the cancer, you know, the infection that he got could not fight back. That was the reality of his, uh, you know, the medical history. It is so unfortunate for us. Okay, thank you. Over to the host. Um, th first of all, thank you very much, uh, Madhavi and Anna. Um, you know, there are parts of his life that most of us were not aware of, especially after he left college. I think where most of us would have lost touch with him. And, you know, it's just wonderful to know of how he kept himself abreast of the new things he tried um, and of your determination to move him out from Nepal to Canada. I think, you know, all said and done with the struggles and the challenges in his health, that was a really, really wise and strong decision. So he was really fortunate to have all of you in his life. Your words uh, and were, were very, very emotional. It was lovely to hear. And I think, you know, for all of us or most of us, uh, it'll be the first time that we knew how y'all met, how y'all moved, how the families come together. I think, you know, we will, other than I guess Sanjoy and I guess Kailash or somebody who would have met him, we haven't met him for many, many, many years. But he's never left our thoughts and he will never leave our thoughts. He will continue to live in our memories. And uh, I think on behalf of all of us as his batchmates, I want to just reiterate that please feel free to reach out in case you need any assistance. I think most. A lot of us are located in various parts of the world. 
in different fields and in some way or the other, uh, we would be able to help and assist you all. So you all are very much part of the family. Uh, so there's no way that you're going to get out of that now. But uh, thank you once again. Thanks for everyone. Please stay strong. Uh, you know, we will certainly keep in touch. Um, you know, I'm just bringing this meeting to a close, but, you know, I think people might, might want to stay on and say a few words. We'd be happy to do that. But thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Advait, Shreshta, Galdum, whichever way we are all know him well, <coughs> given our hearts. And may, you know, I, uh, you may, over time, uh, you'll have the power and to be to heal the loss that you're feeling now. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to sort of close myself, but if anyone wants to sort of say anything, that you know, you know, please, please feel free to do so. Thanks, Vidan. I think that was very well conducted, and I think it was very, very appropriate. And thank you. Thanks once again to the family. I shall sign off now. And Vidan, it would be lovely if you could just post this link of this recording for those who missed it. I think this was this was a very, very memorable morning. So thanks again, Captain. All the best, Thank guys. You. Bless you, the family. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much to everyone and their kind words and solaces. Very appreciated. And as much of as much as my father might have talked about us to you guys, he talked the same amount about you guys to us, and he was very proud of all your accomplishments. He always sent us videos and photos of you guys, and it was just really fun to see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sanjoy. Thank you. Sure thing. Thanks, Thanks Sanjoy. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sanjoy. Thank you, Bidan. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Madhavians. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. That was nice. Very well conducted. Anyone else who wants to speak, uh, please uh, use this if you wish. Right. Sanjoy, may I just say a couple of words, please? Certainly. Well, firstly, my, my deepest condolences uh, to Advait's beautiful family. Um, and thank you, Sanjoy, for um, being there for him. Just two words come to mind uh, about Advait. Um, his humanity and his maturity. Uh, everyone else has said the most beautiful things about him. They're all absolutely true. Many things I didn't know about. I was deeply moved to hear um, um, my, the memories that uh, you know, my brothers shared about Advait. But uh, I'll always remember him for his humanity. This is something that uh, is beyond um, any other memory I have of him. So, uh, deepest thanks to all of you. And uh, please stay in touch to Advait's family. If there's anything you ever need, I and all his friends are here for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did anyone else want, uh, have some thoughts to share? Prasenji? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Sanjo, thanks, thanks for... Uh, you're on. Enjoy. Thanks for being such a rock uh, for Advait all the way to the end. Uh, you know, I think we've had some uh, beautiful memories shared today. Uh, I. You know, my, my greatest memories with Advait were of uh, Kangla, of course, where he was always right in front of the, of the group. And we, we, we Plains folks were stragglers. I was always the last one uh, to reach uh, camp every day. Um, and, uh, and then the cycling expedition to Dalsingpara where uh, Kailash, Advait, and I were, the f and I think, and, and Veli, I think, Anil, we were the first four to arrive. 
uh, after that grueling night of cycling from Siliguri to Dalsing for 150 kilometers, <laughs> starting at 10 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock at night, uh, you know, through the high, you know, driving through highway, I mean, cycling through highways with no lights uh, anywhere. Uh, it was quite something. And uh, uh, my mom remembers. What the, year was that, uh, Prasenjit? That was, that was 1981. Uh, July 1981, there were 20 of us who went on that cycling expedition from Siliguri. We, we, we bought, uh, we basically started a cycling club in St. Paul's. I mean, basically we went to the rector and said, it's a sunshine holiday. Can we start a cycling club? It's the craziest idea because we can't cycle in Darjeeling. I mean, cy cycling in Darjeeling is an absurd idea. So we went down to the plains in Siliguri and um, bought 20 cycles and cycled across. Uh, there were two, two of the 20 kids, Ronnie Chatterjee and Madan Pradhan didn't know how to cycle. Uh, we put them on the cycle and they started cycling. So, I mean, you know, anyway, but we, we, we got, uh, got to Dal uh, about 14 hours later, the first group and the last group arrived about 18 hours after we started. Anyway, uh, but uh, that memory is indelible. My mom remembers very, you know, my mom remembers uh, Advait's big hug uh, and smile as, as we arrived. She had prepared, uh, she had bought uh, three or four kilos of, uh, uh, of rasagullas, hoping that that'll be enough for 20. The first four of us finished off the entire bowl in 10 minutes. Uh, we have, we, <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, it was a, it was really a fun time. And, you know, what we remember about Advait is that he was this, incredibly uh, uh, strong guy, you know, the, that famous story of his shoulder being dislocated and he just putting it back on and continuing to play until the end of the game. Uh, you know, he's, he's a gymnast, a boxer, but also to my, my friendship with him was a philosophical one. We used to just spend hours on the top field. I think Sanjoy was his main buddy on the top field. And I was one of the others who spent hours under this beautiful, um, uh, beautiful uh, uh, starlit sky in Darjeeling and Jalapahar, discussing, philosophizing about life. And the depth of Advait's thinking was always, um, uh, was always something that, that's, that stuck with us. Uh, and it continued ever since we reconnected. But what was really beautiful to hear today was his wonderful life. You know, he was a pioneer quite clearly in, uh, in, his, uh, in his field. He was a pioneer in the fashion industry in, the, in, uh, in Nepal. These were things that we were never really properly aware of. And uh, thank you, Madhavi, for, for enlightening us about his wonderful life. And uh, I just want to reiterate on behalf of all of us, uh, to Madhavi and the, and the children. Remember that you have, you've lost a father and husband, but we are there. We are your extended family. So much. Oh, so much. Thanks. It means a lot to us at this moment. Thank you very much. I, re I have no words to give thanks to St. Paul's, you know. I don't know how I'm gonna repay you guys. No repayment needed. Adwit did all the... And Sanjoy especially, I don't know. I don't have any words. You are my family, Sanjoy. Thank you guys so much. Sometimes he would tell us these stories and we wouldn't believe him because they yes. were so absurd. But you know, you guys just reinstated the same stories and I'm like, should I give him more credibility? <laughs> yes. He, yeah, he kept on, you know, talking about the school days and, and the stories and because of, you know, me coming from very different background and I never, never relate. I just, you know, it was one sided story for me. He just used to give me the information, but I could not react it because I come from uh, a very different background at the same, uh, same time, the age gap, you know, everything was, Addy and me was like, North and South, you know. <laughs> Even then, I don't know how I lived. 
Karshyan ko chori ho. This was wonderful to know because, I mean, when we go up to Darjeeling, the first place I stop always. Is a tourist lodge in Kershaw to have oh, the momos yeah. and Dajli tea. The best yeah. Dajli tea in the world with the best momos are in that tourist lodge in Kershaw. So yes, so wonderful to say, know Kershaw uh, Kachori. Yes, Kershaw Kachori. So for you, everybody, anytime you go to Kershaw at Dajiling, you just let me know. My brother, my maternal home is there. Also, Vancouver always welcome you guys. We are always here for you guys anytime. We hope to meet you guys soon, hopefully. And uh, that's just, it's just really heartwarming to see that he has all of these nice friends. Like, I don't even know if I have friends like this. It's just really heartwarming to see that you guys all have each other's back, even after like 40 years. That's, it's really heartwarming to see. And I'm sure my dad would have loved it. He's watching. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, do we have anyone else wanting to say anything? All right. The, the last I came to know Sriesta. Ah, go uh, ahead. Last uh, I spoke to Sriesta was about a year back. And uh, we came to connect each other. That was about uh, in 2019. That's when my daughter went to Ottawa to study. And uh, we had a lot of discussions uh, in between. Uh, he gave me a lot of advice as to you know, what my daughter should do and how she should go about it. And I was very thankful to him. We uh, uh, exchanged a lot of pleasantries as well as uh, you know, music, uh, which is related to uh, uh, various you know, religious uh, activities. And he thanked me. It was a very, very nice time, you know, catching up with everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, Thank you, Broca. I think I remember your daughter. Uh, I, yeah, Ashita. Yes. Uh, uh, she's, she's in Ottawa. Uh, she, she, uh, she did her... Uh, Social uh, psychology and social psychology. Yes, I remember. Yeah. She was here before, right? In Vancouver. I remember. Adi no, 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 no. She's no. Oh. Oh, you, you're getting mixed up with uh, Sudipto Chaudhary's daughter yeah, or a... uh, Atiku Rahman's daughter. Rahman's. My daughter's never been to uh, Vancouver. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, uh, the... You must have heard about my daughter. No, we did. Yes. Okay, yeah. I remember him. In Carlton remember... University. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, that's about. Yes, I got the chance to meet um, uh, Mukherjee's daughter. She was here a couple yeah. of times. Yes. So yeah. Oh, yeah, Chaudhary. Yeah. yeah, she was here. I, we met her, and also Addy met uh, many times the the girl who is in Toronto. I think now she did a psycholog um, some medical things. She did. I, I, Atikur. I, Atikur. Atikur Atikur, yes. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, uh, you see, uh, I was trying to get in touch with him for the last, uh, say, four or five months. But I don't know. Each time I tried to uh, connect with him, I couldn't get in touch with him. Uh, okay. Bye. The connector. Thank you. Okay. It was very nice uh, speaking to you. I'll definitely keep in touch. And whenever I'm in Canada, I'll definitely. Please, please, please do come. Thank because you are an extended family. Yes. Thank no. you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Subroto. Okay. Calling off. All right. Anyone else? I'll start ending the recording at this point. Mm -hmm.